What up, it's Shinkster94, and welcome to my seventh permanent subscriber notice. So, with that entrance and introduction, this isn't one of my finest moments. It's not one of my finest videos either. In fact, I'm gonna start the subject that I need to discuss in more detail, and I just need to get thoughts off of my chest. So, being a permanent subscriber notice, these videos typically are just major updates of the channel, discussing things of the past and things to come in the future. This is that in spades, and kind of like other permanent subscriber notices, they will also make previous ones redundant in some way or form. Regardless, I'm going to keep them on the channel permanently, and that's just going to be that. Alright, so let's start with Wyatt, also known as the one and only W. So for all those who've seen my recent community post, you pretty much know the story already. Basically, I spent a week with Wyatt in his pad, and it was supposed to be half a vacation for me and my girlfriend Jen, as well as a week of content creation with Wyatt, with what we had planned. Now, here's the thing. Wyatt is very detail-oriented and plan-savvy, which I actually appreciate for the most part. I have my own OCDs about organization and planning things and sticking to plans, so for the most part, I had no problem that he had like a whole itinerary planning out each and every day. What I really didn't like, however, and what ultimately undermined the entire trip for me and my girlfriend Jen is the fact that he had two months to factor her into the equation. His itinerary did not reflect anything about her whatsoever other than giving her one or two items to hold her over, basically, for the entire week we were there. Just the TV and access to his internet, basically. Now, in the beginning, I thought this would be all fine, being all planned out, but yeah, I didn't realize, of course, until a couple days in, that the fact that there was no room whatsoever for me or Jen to do anything that wasn't part of his itinerary. He had every single day planned to the T, more like every single hour of all the days. Like I said, there was no wiggle room, no breathing room whatsoever, and I didn't realize how hellish that was until a couple days in. Now, don't get me wrong, like I said in the post also, the sights, sounds, and smells that I got from going to New York State were really amazing, and I do appreciate Wyatt for making that happen and expanding my horizons and life in general. So I don't absolutely despise the guy, but yeah, unfortunately, being in his presence in his domain, I realized that he is not a type of person I can hang out with, honestly. And it has been apparent for a long time that he had a bit of a controlling personality when it came to me and my content. I don't know, about two years maybe into the Q&As, that's when his power really started taking hold and his input was the only thing I considered because unfortunately, Unfortunately, I am very passive and I am terrible at thinking of things on the spot and thinking on my feet. That is why you see a lot of jump cuts here. It's because I have to constantly cut stuff out. It's like if you see me in my live streams, yeah, it's probably obvious. But anyway, yeah, I'm very passive, so because of that, I never put forth any of my own ideas. I just went with what Wyatt wanted because it did sound good at the time. But yeah, I ultimately decided I cannot associate with him anymore because of his controlling nature. If you're watching this, Wyatt, I did enjoy our time when it was fun. It's like the first couple years I knew you, man, things were awesome. I think it's when I met you in the flesh, things started going south for me. And yeah, it's like, we all know why at this point. Sorry guys, yeah, this is a deep subject for me. I did debate if I should make it part of the subscriber notice or actually just make a separate video, but no, I think it's important that everyone who visits my channel knows... Okay, so here's the thing. I now consider the last four years of my channel the infamous phase. It's the phase that Wyatt was a part of. Regardless of maybe the good times we did have, yeah, ultimately it represented a time when he became a force to be known on my channel channel and now that I dislike him I don't like that whole part of my channel anymore so if you didn't notice I already deleted every live stream that I had with Wyatt so Resident Evil 4 5 Umbrella Chronicles Dark Side Chronicles Revelations Revelations 2 and the quarter beat remake stream as well as the classic biohazard stream that one was kind of sad to take down because that was legit hardware I could make something like that myself with it because 
Even though I'm disassociating myself with him, I do appreciate all the things he did give me. All the gifts, they are amazing. All the plaques and all the hardware cables. <laughs> It's like he provided me so much it's like none of that's gonna go in vain but I don't want to associate myself with him anymore because his true nature really really bothers me and it stressed me out near the end of my trip it's like me and my girlfriend were desperate to get out I almost considered dipping out the night before <laughs> I'm gonna be honest but no I stuck it out until the end I just out of respect just finished the time we had planned with Wyatt just let him have it for the time he wanted and then I just severed it after that all right I think that'll end it for that part <laughs> of the subscriber notice I apologize if this is quite dramatic so moving on really it's just future stuff I have planned like cuz now I want to do content only my way again no Wyatt influence and just support for from you guys which you have clearly shown me and when you responded to the community post those of you who did honestly I hearted every single one of your comments and liked it you guys are the true fans the true supporters you're not pushing your input onto me you're not making me feel like I have to do what you guys want you just simply support what I give you guys and those are the type of fans I really appreciate honestly of course I'm always open to suggestive ideas I just would hope you wouldn't push it onto me like Wyatt did so, all right so, future stuff. I'm gonna get together with Ophirgale the Fearless, and I'm gonna get going with that Discord thing. That is something that is gonna still happen. I do believe it will become a great hub for my closest fans to just chat with each other, chat with me. We'll have community discussions, maybe from time to time. I'll do it however I can manage, but I think it would still be great. And yeah, Feargale and anyone else who might wanna just chat with me on Skype, or any other video service that we can all get on somehow. But yeah, I'm gonna make it happen. Discord. Seriously. Before I continue with future stuff, let me talk about something sort of related to the Wyatt thing, unfortunately. Q&As. Uh, let's be honest. We all know they're dead. Wyatt was the only person who was making them a thing at that point. His sea of blue is a great reason why I don't want to deal with him anymore. He flooded the streams. They were boring. They were recycled questions, preparatory, all of that. It's not what a Q&A should be about. Q&A should be genuine, heartfelt questions thought on the spot when you tune in in the Q&A, honestly. That's what they used to be, in my opinion, way better back in the weeklies, those when when it was still good. The first year of Q&As, in my opinion, was the best year. All that came after that, it started very slowly at first going downhill, and then this last year or so, god, these have been slopping so much. So, where I'm going with this, the Q&As, the originally, I was gonna go all the way to May the 4th, 2022, to do a total of five years of Q&As. I'm debating whether or not I'm gonna stick to that. Honestly, now that I have full control of my channel again and will do whatever I want, I honestly, I might just end the Q&As on the spot. Maybe still do September's, but make it like the last one. Just a farewell to the Q&As. Unless you want to mention in the comments or something that if you actually do still support the Q&As and believe now without Wyatt in the Sea of Blue, you think they'll be a little more enjoyable. Like more upfront, more direct, more solid. We'll see. So I'm willing to give the Q&As one more fleeting chance just to see how they are without the copy and paste recycled question bullshit. So I was going to cancel them immediately but now that I think about it right in this moment I think I will give them a fleeting chance so yeah there's the Q&A's and back to future stuff so of course we got current projects the most anticipated one I know Resident Evil Village ultimate HD weapon review it's definitely what I need to do content wise so I will dedicate to that I do have some clips recorded already specifically the intro and all the weapon locations and their part locations so I still have to overview the weapons test them out then test them on enemies yeah those are the main parts so I still have all that to do not near done unfortunately with the weapon review but it is underway and it will be dedicated to full time once I get my bearings together and recover from the New York trip. I hope I don't look too terrible to you guys. I'm stoned as hell, but thankfully it's the weekend and I got all day ahead of me, so I don't care. 
So continuing the weapon review, of course, and then after that, there will be some sort of melee move review for Village because Chris definitely has melee and Ethan. Some of his escape maneuvers induce an impactful hit of some sort. So that counts as melee in my books. So I'll review it like I do for melee for my very old fans who have been there since the melee move reviews. You guys are the titans of subscribers, honestly. Those of you who are out there, Shout yourself out in the comments. So after all the village content, I'll finally return to full plays. And of course I'll get headway onto Resident Evil Outbreak. I know there's quite a few of you out there who want that full play to get back underway because you love Outbreak and not to Tomoe, I'm looking at you. Now, I do want to start another mini thing if I possibly can manage it. I wanna do like miniature supercuts of stuff. And one I wanna do is something that has been suggested many times by a few people, but none more than Ophirgil the Fearless. And that is a super cut of all of my headshots in my weapon reviews. Something like that would be an easy to make super cut and I think it would be rather enjoyable for my diehard weapon review fanatics. See, the weapon reviews to me are the best element on the channel, seriously. It's like, that's an element that covers the entire franchise and I have covered almost every game. There are a small handful of games I actually haven't done a weapon review on. To name them, I haven't done a weapon review on Resident Evil Deadly Silence, even though that's just a port of Resident Evil 1. I'd say it would deserve its own weapon review separate from the original Resident Evil 1. And then of course there are the undesirable games that I outright refuse to play, like Umbrella Core. I don't have a weapon review for that. I don't have anything on Umbrella Core on this channel yet. Nothing. Other than my hatred for it. But yeah. Umbrella Core has no weapon review, and Resident Evil Resistance doesn't have a weapon review because I refused to touch that game after I did the overview. God, that was painful for me. I don't know why. It has the same engine as Resident Evil 2 Remake and 3 Make, so it should be enjoyable gameplay-wise, but I don't know. I just did not have a good time when I tried it for myself in that live overview. Go check it out if you still haven't. So yeah, just saying, there's plenty to do for weapon reviews, but it's like, those are the undesirable games, and the rule with those I have for myself is I'm not touching them until I make it to those games in the full play series, and true fans know how slow that's going, so we got so long before those. So yeah, super cuts, starting with like a headshot compilation, I think is what I'll do. That's something I could drop actually within a week, honestly, it's something I kinda wanna do. But another thing I want to do that's been discussed before is a Resident Evil tier list. I want to do a tier list of all the games, maybe even including RE-verse, even though it's not out yet and I don't have a solid opinion, I can go off of like beta test videos and whatnot and I can get a decent understanding of it just watching Watching that so I could include that too so yeah I definitely want to do a tier list like very soon and I want to live stream that I would make it a scheduled live stream preferably on a weekend day like today that I'm making this subscriber notice so yeah I will make a discord I will make a Resident Evil tier list I will make super cuts of multiple elements on my channel see this is kind of tying into projects I've talked about in the past like does anybody remember the Into the Past or the Throwback project I teased in a community post? Basically, I wanted to do a supercut of like all the videos I have of me in the flesh, like going all the way back to when I was young, new to YouTube, and even prior to that, like before YouTube, like share some home videos, just regular footage of me doing whatever. I'm down to show that type of stuff to you guys. Like I've been on this platform for 11 years now, and this platform is a home for me, honestly and I have people who really appreciate my content and have probably gotten to know me somewhat through this platform. So I am really appreciative of you guys and it's a really nice feeling. So yeah, that throwback project, I don't know what's gonna become of that. I did say that wasn't gonna interfere with any current projects and that's exactly what's happening. So I haven't been touching it because I have a current project. It's the weapon review for Resident Evil Village. So yeah, that's just a side project that may or may not ever come to fruition just like the failed 10 year anniversary project remember that so yeah that might conclude my subscriber notice although I should showcase like my current equipment it's like all the peripherals and devices I use to currently create my content it's like it's something worth showing I guess so I introduce you to this section of the permanent subscriber notice yep it's quite a bit
big one. It's probably the biggest one, probably the weirdest one, but probably the most interesting one, honestly. So yeah, I'm gonna take you guys in freestyle mode now. <laughs> and hopefully I don't give you guys nausea with the movement. All right, so let's start with the microphone. This is the Blue Yeti X. It is a more professional version of the very well-known Blue Yeti. Now, some of you may know, I used to have a regular Blue Yeti. It was red, actually. I have it stored in this cabinet of mine. You can kind of see it in there. Yeah, ah, it's really grainy. Can't fix that. But yeah, you can see it right there. Yep, that poor thing, the cable snapped off. And unfortunately, for some reason, only the cable it came with worked with it. No other cable that was the same damn type of cable was working with it. I have no idea why. Anyway, I had the money to spare, so I got the Blue Yeti, Blue Yeti X, that is. And check this out. I re only just recently got this, the pop filter or the windsock for it. I used to use a pop filter in front of this. It was like a round circular one. I don't know where I put it. I think I put it somewhere where I can't find it anymore. But um, yeah, I decided to get this because this is a lot more manageable. That thing was clamped to my desk and it was damaging it. So this thing is just a lot more convenient. Just put right there and make my voice or my P's and T's muffled so they're not popping it out. All right, so yeah, that's the microphone. It's really nice, and I only recently started looking up tutorials on using Audacity and using audio filters to make my voice super crisp and smooth as possible. So, that's my microphone. Now, I kinda wish I got my other webcam working because I want to show you, of course, this webcam that I'm using. I am using the Avermedia PW513. It is a 4K webcam. Can do 4K at 30 frames per second. That's what I'm filming this subscriber notice at. I'm a 4K YouTuber now, guys. All of my content, if I can, will be in 4K. So yeah, with 4K 30, it can also do full HD 1080p 60 frames per second. If I want the faster frame rate, which for most cases I actually do want. I do like the frame rate more than resolution ultimately, because that's a more noticeable difference. And not everyone is on the 4K k bandwagon yet so i won't always do 4k i'll probably do 1080p 60 a lot more with this webcam but for this subscriber notice i wanted utmost resolution because i got deep raw motion in this and yeah this is a really important one so i want top-notch quality in this case and i want more cinematic feel so the lower frame rate is better for this case so anyway i want to show you this webcam so I need to find a way, hopefully, to activate the other one. It won't work for some reason. It's like I might have to stop the recording and start another snippet, actually. So I'll be right back. Here we are. So I got my other webcam working, the one I was using for a while, actually. This one's 1080p at 30 frames, 720p at 60. Not good at 720p, honestly. But anyway, this is my 4K webcam, the Avermedia PW513. This thing is a beast, honestly. This thing gets really hot in the back, especially when I'm doing 4K. Uh, it actually burns my finger to the touch. It does use quite a bit of power, so nothing to joke with. But yeah, that's the 4K webcam. Wanted to demonstrate that. All right, so let's switch over to that now. All right, let's see. That's it for my peripherals, really. I mean, of course, I got keyboard and mouse, but that's not worth showing. It's not involved with content creation or whatnot. You guys saw my green screen before. I guess I didn't really demonstrate it much other than in the last live stream, I'll go grab that real quick. So this is the Elgato green screen, basically. Really easy to use. Yep, just like that, I got some green screen. This is a terrible angle for it right now, so I can only use it partially. But now, if I, I could try to apply it, yeah, it's a terrible key right now. Plus, there's really nothing to key out to <laughs> that I have at the moment, so it's not really worth showing, but yeah. I can only key it out so much before it starts keying me out, too, you know? But anyway, just to demonstrate that, that's one of my cool... 
coolest pieces of equipment now. We'll use it during like live streams where I'm on camera or whatnot. But yeah, I'm gonna deactivate that filter now. Perfect. And yeah, I also do have a video filter going for that webcam as well. See, this is it deactivated right now. No color filter. So I'm kind of washed out, a little darker. But yeah, this really brings out the lighting and the colors, so it's really nice. I have a different one. It's like it's this, but I don't think it works as well as this one, so I'm going with this one. This is just a crop, so yeah, that doesn't work. So yeah, that's the green screen. I guess I'll put that down now. very durable and then of course I mean I guess I'll show this off this is the desktop I use to make it all happen nowadays this was actually a gift from my real-life friends name is Ryan I think it goes by like I'm Wolfie something like that or wolf gaming something he has wolf in his username it's one of those two I think I have actually both of those usernames one's a subscriber and the other is my real-life friend so can't really distinguish between the two actually but anyway, this is from him, and this is a really nice rig. It is getting slightly outdated, but it still does all the work I needed to just fine. So I'm happy to have it. Do you want the specs? CPU, it's an Intel Core i7, like 3.4 gigahertz. Has an NVIDIA GeForce 1070 graphics card, solid state drive, hard disk drive, and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Pretty good. But yeah, I am really hankering for a big time upgrade, like a 4K editing and gaming rig, honestly. So I'm looking more at either Intel i9 or AMD 5900 or 5950. I've been looking a lot at PC specs lately. Down to talk about that in community discussions and whatnot. Type of rig I'm looking for, that was the CPU. GPU, I want like Nvidia GeForce 3090. It's like 32 gigabytes of RAM minimum, aiming more for 64. I want all solid state drives. I don't want any hard disk drives in my new rig if I ever get around to building one and have the funds, <laughs> which I definitely don't right now. The New York trip actually ate into my wallet quite a bit. Uh, anyway, something on my mind for future is a new rig, but for now this does nicely. That's mostly everything that I have to show off. I mean, my monitor is nothing really to show off. It's a generic 1080p, 60 hertz monitor. I love that TV that's right back here. That thing is really nice to create 4K content on. I have the PC connected to that thing when I'm recording 4K games. Village is definitely one of them. That actually might conclude this permanent subscriber notice, ladies and gentlemen. Real quick, I have another piece of equipment to showcase. My current capture device, the Elgato 4K60 S Plus. This is a very important piece of hardware, if not the most important piece as of today for me. Because this is what allows me to now live stream and record at 4K60 from any current gen console. In my case, the Xbox Series X right back here. So the village live stream that you guys saw was filmed with this. Let me show you the actual unit. Here you go. So yeah, pretty sleek in design. Anyway, so there's the front of it. I'm gonna just press that button to start recording. I could also control it remotely from the computer because on the back where all the inputs are, uses HDMI input, supports up to HDMI 2.0. That's what allows for the 4K 60. And then this is the power port. You can use a power supply instead of like a PC port in order to power this thing. This capture device can actually run without a PC. That's what this slot is for, the SD card slot. And that's where you would save it. Otherwise, this other USB port at the very end, this connects to your PC, and you can use this device as a video input capture device using OBS, for example, like I do. Pretty nifty. This is one of the most important devices I have as of now, other than my actual PC. So yeah, there you go. I really appreciate you if you stuck it out this entire time. I mean, it's much longer for me than it is for you guys, actually. Anyway, I appreciate y'all's time. This has been Shankster94, aka The Gamer Shankster. Rate, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Shankster underscore 94. Check out my Facebook page. Support me on Patreon. Good luck to Wyatt. Thank you for have been my one and only patron for a while. Your support will be missed, but it is what it is. But shout out to all the former patrons, of course, and I will see you guys in all that future content. Peace out.